Hello everyone, this is Manjula Devi P. In this session, I would like to discuss about uh, one of the important concepts of investment management that is analysis of variable income securities. So it comes in this chapter 2 of investment management security analysis. So under security analysis, today we will see uh, what is the meaning of variable income securities and how the analysis is done. So basically the meaning of variable income securities are these are the securities which do not carry a fixed rate of return like preference shares, debentures, bonds which carry a fixed coupon rate, these securities uh, do not uh, promise any fixed rate to the investor. So they are, uh, the return determines, I mean de uh, depends on the uh, market forces and on the many other factors uh, uh, like company performance, companies policies, like the uh, demand and supply for that security in the market. So there are many factors which matter for the yield or return for these uh, variable income securities. So but uh, at the same time uh, they do carry a great amount of risk but at the same time they have the probability of uh, giving uh, unlimited rewards to the holders like the same basic rule of investment management which says higher the risk higher the return. This is true in case of variable income securities because for the return there is no limit. So uh, if you have invested in 100 rupees uh, shares, equity shares, so next year the share value may be say 200. So that means the capital gain that you can expect uh, that you actually will have is 100 percent, isn't it? No investment, no company, no bank uh, offers 100 percent return in one year. But here you have the chances of getting 100 or even more than that. I just quoted uh, that as an example. So here uh, this variable income securities carry uh, huge amount of risk at the same time they carry huge amount of returns as well. The chances of earning returns are also more. Example as I was saying equity shares and many other like uh, basically the ownership shares or equity shares or ordinary shares is the best example for this variable income securities. So in exchange for this risk, investors of these securities demand higher returns compared to the fixed income counter counterparts. That means as they are uh, carrying huge amount of risk, the expectation of the shareholders when they are investing in these uh, type of securities, the returns are also they expect more compared to the fixed income securities. So what is the advantage of the variable uh, rate securities? We have relative principal protection and price stability. So here in this case it means compared to the fixed uh, interest counterparts even they are subject to interest rate risk and credit risk similar type of risks and their return uh, directly depends on the ceiling rate of the interest that the government determines. But here there is no such uh, dependency on the government rate because here the rate depends on purely on the forces of market and supply, purely on the performance of the company. So that way the protection of the principal and the uh, stability in the income can be expected relatively compared to the fixed income securities. Then um, income and absolute return potential. So these securities provide a uh, great amount of return at the same time as we said of course it carries risk at the same time it has the potential of giving great returns on the capital that they have invested. Then it actually adds to the portfolio diversification and uh, helps in better risk management. It means a uh, portfolio which includes uh, various types of securities. If you are building a portfolio, you may have some amount of government securities, some amount of fixed return securities like debentures, preference shares, 
same way you may also include if you include the uh, variable income securities it helps in better diversification it helps in uh, better risk management because uh, you are taking a greater risk here it will be compensated by uh, assuring you the greater return and whatever the return that you are getting with the government securities or fixed return securities if uh, obviously that will be lower than the expectation of the variable income securities when these provide you higher returns and if the fixed return securities provide you lower returns then it gets compensated or the other way round if these securities are giving you lesser return and uh, the fixed income securities are giving you whatever uh, it was promised then again your uh, risk management would be in a better way so the variable income securities actually adds up for the diversification and gives better risk management tool for the investors what are the potential risks that these securities carry as i said they carry uh, relatively higher risk compared to the fixed return securities what are the different uh, types of risks that they come across first and foremost credit risk so that means this means the default risk so default in the payment of dividends or it may result in the default in the repayment of capital or for the company itself the debtors may not pay back properly to the company so they in turn may incur loss so that loss again uh, will reflect on the dividends that are supposed to be paid so that way these uh, variable income securities are open for the credit risk any time because as the company do not promise any fixed rate the rate depends on the profitability and uh, many other factors uh, depending on the company so it always carries a credit risk so the company may be default in paying the dividends as well as in the principal repayment then interest rate risk though interest rates are not directly uh, related or directly uh, connected to the uh, equity shareholders but still the general interest rate uh, reduction in the market may affect the equity shareholders as well so when com- when the government itself is reducing the ceiling rate then in a indirect way it may also affect the equity shareholders uh, when they are expecting their returns then uh, risk of asset backed securities so in this case if the shares are issued as uh, asset backed securities that means there there are some assets uh, which acts as a backup or mortgage for these shares so in such case if the asset itself loses its value or if the project for which these shares were issued if the project itself uh, gets obsolete or outdated or stops providing the returns then naturally these shares also will lose its value then underlying benchmark may return remain static so this means uh, as uh, we all know about the inflation so the return what we get compared to the uh, return what we used to get earlier though the rates are higher but if the inflation rate is more higher than the return what we are getting then the return the actual return in terms of in the hands of uh, the investors may be static suppose you are getting 10000 last year as dividends this year you got say 11000 but if the interest rate was more than 10% say uh, whatever you were able to get for 10000 last year this year you have to pay say uh, you have to spend 12000 so but you are getting 11000 as the return so in the absolute terms last year it was 10 this year it is 11 so it has increased but in the real term when we see your returns have not increased at all in fact it has decreased okay so the benchmark whatever we are taking may remain static because of various reasons like inflation or because of uh, obsolescence of the underlying asset or any for any reason but anyway variable securities carry uh, risk 
mainly the credit risk or maybe the operational risk also i have not mentioned here but they are also open for the operational risk in the sense if the company is not able to generate sufficient returns then naturally they won't get any returns like it returns in terms of dividends when they don't get proper returns even the uh, capital appreciation of those equity shares are also affected like in the market the value of the shares are also affected uh, and it is actually directly related to the profitability of the company if the company is giving getting good profit then they pay good dividends in the market also the price of those securities would be in a higher trend but if the profits are less because of the operational risk and if the dividend rate is less if they are not paying dividends or if the rates are less then naturally in the market also the prices of the shares would be less so that means directly it is related to operational risk of the business also then how do we carry out the analysis see before investing in any variable income securities or in any investment avenue for that matter a thorough analysis has to be conducted blindly one cannot just go and pick one security and invest or blindly one cannot go and invest in any investment avenue which is right in front of them before investing a thorough analysis has to be done especially when we are talking about variable income securities more detailed analysis has to be done so what are the basic analysis we do the analysis what we carry can be divided into two types one is fundamental analysis the other one is technical analysis anyway in the coming sessions we are going to discuss about this fundamental and technical analysis in detail so what do we basically do in fundamental analysis in the fundamental analysis we have three uh, types or like three phases first one will analyze the economy the entire economy at the macro level so what is the economic condition of the country what about uh, the gdp what are, what about the inflationary trends in the economy what are the major policies that are affecting the business and what are what is the political scenario so many uh, what is the demography of the country so many things which actually matters at the macro level will be analyzed at the economic analysis then we have industry analysis so here the industry where you want to invest okay the detailed analysis of that industry the strengths and weakness of the industry possible threats and opportunities of the industry so all those growth potential of the industry all that will be analyzed in the industry analysis when we come to company analysis so here if you have decided on a specific company we make a detailed study of the company like uh, we generally take the help of ratios we take the help of common size we take the help of trend analysis to assess the position of the company at present so anyway about all these three analysis we are going to discuss in detail in the coming sessions so all these three phases are included in the fundamental analysis then we have technical analysis basically a whole lot of analysis is been done when we talk about technical analysis but as per the syllabus or just for introducing the technical analysis we have mentioned three we have something called do theory we have charting we have trends so these three for example right now is been considered for doing the technical analysis which uh, talks about how to find out the uh, value of or how to find out the uh, future value of a share or a security okay anyway about the fundamental analysis and technical analysis we are going to di discuss in detail in the coming sessions so just to have a quick recap of what we discussed so far in this session variable income securities are those securities which do not have a fixed rate of return or which do not carry a coupon rate and the return on such securities depends on the market forces best example is equity share they do carry a high risk compared to fixed income securities at the same time they have the potential of giving high return 
to the investors. So a detailed analysis has to be done before taking the investment decision. The analysis can be broadly categorized into fundamental analysis and technical analysis. There are many things has to be uh, done under fundamental analysis and also technical analysis which we are going to see in the next sessions. Okay, this is these are some of the further references material which you can go through for getting the concept more clear. Thank you very much. Hope you have understood the concept. We will meet in the next video. Thank you.